Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Create Your Life series, where we help you maximize your potential and results in the area of personal development, entrepreneurship, and travel. And I'm your host, Kevin Y. Brown. Create your life. Create ta propre vie. Create your life. 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 You better create your life. <laughs> create your life. Create la vie. Create your life. Create your life. Create Your Life family, thanks for tuning in to this episode. Before we get started, I wanted to share some exciting information from our sponsor. We only pick people and companies that we think are awesome to bring onto the show, so please support them. As a podcaster, I've spent hours and hours editing, doing show graphics, and much more, and I finally got fed up with losing all of my free time to post-production activities. So I decided to do something about it. And if you are a fellow busy podcaster who would like to just record and have someone else do the dirty work of graphic creation, tagging and uploading your show to your server and in-depth SEO generating show notes, go to podcastlaundry.com or call 347-871-8273 to schedule your consultation. That's podcastlaundry.com or 347-871-8273. Beautiful people, this is the Create Your Life series. I'm your host, Kevin Y. Brown, and it is another amazing day, and this is going to be another amazing episode. Today is CEO Talks, where you get to hear about life from myself and our resident contributor from the point of view of the CEO seat. Of course, I'm your host, Kevin Y. Brown, and he is Todd Weiner, CEO of Clever Era. Todd, are you here with us? I am, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Doing amazing. I'm excited to give out these updates on us and be fully transparent about our business, what's working, what's not working, and how we intend on fixing those things and making these improvements to grow our businesses. I think that sounds really good. Sweet, man. First question I want to ask you fresh out the gates is, what's the current business that you're working on and how's it going? So my current business is called Clever Era, and the overall mission of Clever Era is helping bootstrapped entrepreneurs build businesses. And that means even if you don't have an idea, even if you don't have capital, and especially if you don't have technical ability, we actually show you how to do all of that. And the specific way that we do that is that we help people launch and grow service-based businesses. So any kind of business that would define their user as a client. And what we do is we help people overcome the monthly revenue roller coaster. And we show them how to double or triple or quadruple their client load. We show them how to launch high ticket products. So products that are over a thousand or 2000 or $5,000. And we do that so that they can honestly like live the life that they want without the stress, the anxiety, or the overwhelm that comes with just trying to launch a business and trying to grow a business and not knowing where to go. There's so much misinformation out there that a lot of times it can be confusing and it can really get you depressed if you if you try because for every article where it says the five ways to do this, there's another article that says whatever you do, don't do that. There's so much information and so many books on so many topics, and it's all over the place. So what we do is we organize everything. We teach you how to do it step by step from ground zero all the way up to a five or six figure business. We even have some people that are heading off into seven figures. So that's what we do. And uh, so far, it's doing great. It's doing really well. The short story is that this business is a spin out. It's spun off of our consulting business, our software side. We have a background in development and producing apps and launching software products. And we found with a lot of our clients that they had the idea and they really had the drive to put something out in the marketplace, but they weren't really sure how to attract clients. They weren't sure how to grow a user base. So Nobody, at least in software development, nobody really wants to spend six to eight months of their lives building something that nobody uses. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. and It's a lot of energy. And really, at the end of the day, as a creator of a product, all you want is somebody to use it and, and really be able to get something out of it. So when you have a client or when you have someone come in and they might have the financing ready, it's really not about the money at the end of the day. It's, it's about having somebody use the thing that you built and seeing the results that they get. And 
all it took was like one or two times for us not getting that from doing all this work and having clients put it out in the market and then basically having it sit on the shelf. It pushed us into a direction where we started training people on how to do this. Okay. Oh, that sounds and, awesome. And yes, yeah, business is good. Business is good. And so I got a question for you, man, which is the exact same. So what is the business that you're working on and where are you? How is How are things going, man? Things are going well. Well, you know, with the Create Your Life series. So it's funny, you know, I'm doing a couple of things simultaneously, as usual. The Create Your Life series is going amazing. We're definitely booking more shows, guests and things like that. And it's leading to other opportunities of the business that I've been running. So, you know, Legacy Thinking Labs is the umbrella that I operate under. And so Create Your Life series is good and talks to some advertisers and things like that because they love the content. So great on that front. Uh, another venture that I'm really working on right now and working to build is Podcast Laundry which is essentially for podcasters by podcasters. And we're a full service concierge service for podcasters, for the people who have, for the busy podcaster who essentially just wants to record and leave all of the dirty work to somebody else to do the, the notes, the editing, and all of the things that come with that, the MP3 tagging and just everything like that, man. So it's going good. We have a couple of clients right now still building and I'm excited about it. Because the more and more that I'm learning and as we're making transitions in the Create Your Life series to become more location independent, I'm just learning so much. And so it's even better for our clients because they get to grow with us and we're fully transparent about all of the things that we're learning and doing as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. When did you guys launch? Podcast Launch, launched this past summer. So I would say in about July. And, you know, we've been full steam ahead. Got some great ads up and... We're doing some amazing stuff. We've helped out some people, helped some people launch their podcasts already who have become clients. So we're moving pretty quickly. That's fantastic to hear, man. Yeah. So, Todd, how are you going about growing your business, the Atomic Startup? What are some of the strategies that you're using? So what we did is we launched Atomic Startup, which is our flagship product under the Clever Era banner. And that's the one that's primarily based on helping the service-based businesses double and triple their, their client load. And essentially what we did is we launched it in February and it was all word of mouth. And to be quite honest, when I started it, I had maybe one or two people in mind. I've learned over doing this for a long time. I was like, okay, if I can just get one sale, I'll just focus on that person, get that person an amazing result. And then I'll worry about scaling up or doing whatever. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening is I sold it to one person and I started telling other people that I got my first sale and very quickly I got five other sales and I use a a technique of selling called stair stepping where I essentially the very first person I give a super sweetheart deal Mm -hmm. to because a they're an early adopter. There's no testimonial for the specific product. They're the testimonial, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're the first person to buy the product. And then every consecutive person after that, I raise the price until I hit my gold price, which is in my head. So I get it. I take it as far as I can. So we've just been raising the price and people are getting results and everybody, knock on wood so far, everybody's loved it. We're starting to get the results in that we want to see. You know, when someone sends you a text and they're like, oh my God, I just sold a program for $12,000. Thank you so much. Like that, that makes my day. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So right now it's been word of mouth and probably... Hopefully, like either end of September or October, we start phase two, which is cold outreach to our network to start driving more sales. Uh, I'm looking for just a couple, which I know I can get. And then next year will be scaling. Okay. Love it, man. It sounds like you got some really good strategies. And I love how you said you have that number in your head that you want to get to, but you want to start off with that sweetheart deal. That's something that we do as well or that we have done in order to get our first few clients. And I would have to say also one of the great things that we did that helped us to grow podcast laundry is actually going and attending the conference. And as I attended the conference, you know, I had the opportunity to have discussions and conversations with other podcasters, ask them about the services that they're currently using. And that has Mm -hmm. been an amazing thing to be able to do. And it's definitely proven some results. Have some phone calls today, actually, with some other podcasters who are looking to offset some of that, what I like to call dirty work, man, because to be honest with you, editing takes so long to do. Right. How has the response been? It's been good. It's been really good. Like people, they love it. So let me ask you this, man. How did you come up with it? How did you come up with Podcast Laundry? Because I got to say, like, it seems like it's one of those things that when you told it to me the first time, when I heard about the concept the first time, it sounds like it's something that is like, oh, that's such an obvious thing. Like, clearly there's got to be a thing in the market. Like, how did you actually come up with it? Are there other competitors in the market too? Or is this something that you just came out of the blue to you? Like, Absolutely. Well, initially we were starting out, we just wanted to do editing. 
And so I started to look at that, of course, after going through SLP and being around other people in the startup world, I said, okay, what does it look like to scale this? And even before, while I was doing that and thinking about scale and what the numbers would need to be in order to make it to a certain amount of annual net income, I also went and I started to do some customer discovery. And so I started to go into all of the podcast groups and ask people, hey, what is it that is your biggest pain in the behind when it comes to podcasting? And so I surveyed maybe like, oh, man, I want to say probably close to 100 people. And Mm. a lot of them talked about how editing was the thing that drug them down and took them the longest period of time. And so then I followed up and I said, hey, well, do you pay for the service? And a lot of people were saying that they do it themselves. And so I said, you know what? This is an area and a need that we can be in. And initially when I went out and I started to look for competitors, I didn't see many because I only saw certain websites that were brands, et cetera, et cetera. And what I found out later on, especially at the podcast movement conference, was that a lot of the podcast editors are not brands per se, but they're just people who like to do editing. Ah, so you you decided to kick it up. You saw an opening to kick it up a notch as an actual service rather than an independent consultant or freelancer who does editing for things. Well, that and at first we were still only thinking of editing, but after having some really great conversations and wanting to jump into scale and be paid for the time that it would take in order to do this, because make no mistake, the editing, it's still going to, the three hours that it takes them to edit or the five hours, it's still going to have to be done, except for it's going to be done by us. But even in order to manage that process or do the editing ourselves, we need to be compensated in a way that is going to make it make sense for us to be doing it for you. And so with mm-hmm. that, I talked to a young lady who's going to be a guest on the show. I'm super excited to have her on because she's so knowledgeable, has amazing energy, also from Canada. And she said that if you're competing for editing, you're competing on a downward pricing spiral. And she said, someone's always going to undercut you. Exactly. And she said, people can cut your legs from under you. Essentially, it's a red ocean. She said, the moment that you become more than just the editing service, the floodgates will open up and you will get the people exactly who you want. And so with that, I took it and I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and define who the customer is that we want, because we want someone who's going to be able to, to pay for our service and that we're going to enjoy working with. And sometimes the level of headache matches the price point, meaning that if somebody's (laughs) paying a bit more, then they're probably going to be a little more hands off than a person who's scrambling to pay. And our original price point was like one ninety nine mm-hmm. for five episodes a month, which puts you at mm-hmm. about forty dollars an episode. That person might be more involved and more of a headache. So it's like if you, you know what I mean, if you're going to be very particular about your show, then we want to make sure that we're being compensated to meet your every single demand. And so well, that's, we have to switch the model. That's actually really interesting because we found the same thing. And, and I've heard other people talk about this, but at least for me, it wasn't something that really clicked until I saw it myself and really understood it. And that is, there's a tendency to believe that when you charge more for a service that your customer or your client is going to be very, very hands on. And what ends up happening is the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Usually it's the people who have a lower tier product or a low priced product. Mm -hmm. Those are the product owners that have the most problems with finicky customers that want everything this way and that way. And there's always going to be problems. They're always the ones asking for refunds. And what you learn is that at a certain price point, the higher up you go, you're dealing with a different class of person. When you're dealing with a business owner, like for me, I don't have time to screw with things, right? That's why I hire somebody to take care of specific aspects of my business. I just Mm -hmm. want to pay the money and get it done. And what you find is, and I think what you're saying and what you found yourself is that by hitting a specific price point, what ends up happening is that you're getting a, a different caliber of business owner who's just like, who's very used to paying a certain price just to have something taken care of. And as long as it gets done, it's hands off for the most part. Absolutely. Right? And so that's who we wanted. We want someone, our ideal customer is a high net worth individual who oftentimes is a professional speaker who is busy, needs Mm -hmm. the podcast in order to increase their business, but doesn't have time to do it. And so they want to offset and offload the responsibilities and the duties, the dirty work 
of podcasting to someone that they trust and that they know has gotten the results. See, the thing that drives us and makes Podcast Laundry unique is the fact that I've actually taken a live radio show, turned it into a podcast, and then got it nationally syndicated. And so that's one of our unique value propositions is that, hey, we definitely know what we're doing. And then we also have produced over 100 shows, which are high quality, and we've had some amazing guests and things like that. So we've also, something that'll be added on later on, is we've also figured out how to automate your back end. I think another thing just popped in my head when you were talking that lends itself to premium pricing is mm-hmm. that you have an aspect of an aspirational brand associated with podcast laundry and that, yeah, you might be offering editing. Yeah. You might offer branding. Yeah. You might offer the A to Z of podcasting, but because of your own personal background and the things that you have been able to accomplish, mm-hmm. right? Anyone that has the money to invest in a podcast and to really take their own personal brand for it, whether they're marketers or speakers or whatever it is, some of those people are going to look at what you've been able to do with your own business, going from nothing and going to nationwide radio, terrestrial radio stations and have this broadcast all over the country. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at that and say, well, maybe I can, if I partner up with these guys, maybe I'll be able to get to that level as well, because clearly this guy knows what he's doing. And I think that also is another not only just a feather in the cap of you as a person and you as an expert and an authority in the space, but it also lends itself as a little bit of that social proof and that little bit of that aura rubs off on the people that come to you because they're like, hey, this person might be a little more pricey. They might be a premium price, but look at what they've been able to accomplish. Clearly, this guy and this business knows what they're doing because I cannot imagine that any competitor that's out there in the market, and I don't know how many there are, but I can't imagine that there's many competitors out there that can say, oh, yeah, here are the radio stations we're on, iHeart and XM, and here's the actual radio station in Harlem and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Like, you kind of blow them out of the water, I would, I would assume. No, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely some competitive advantages of being a part of Podcast Laundry. You know, it's a family. And that's what we really pride ourselves on is making it a communal thing where we're all trying to help each other to become better and to do more amazing things. Wow. Create Your Life family. I hope that you are really enjoying this episode. I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsors and let you know that our sponsors are giving special offers just for you. If you are a fellow busy podcaster who just wants to record and spend the rest of your time doing what you love, like working out at the gym with family and friends or traveling, use code CYLS for a discount on services when you go to podcastlaundry.com or call 347-871-8273 to schedule your consultation. That's podcastlaundry.com or 347-871-8273. And without further ado, let's get back to the show. And what about you, man, for Atomic Startup? What's the culture like over there amongst your students? Uh, It is. It's absolutely. I consider it family. And I tell them that as well. And my door is always open. I mean, my door is always open to everybody. But for the people who are in my the first cohort, it's total access. So the standard that I provide for them and them only is every single one of them gets at least an hour, usually an hour and a half, one-on-one mentorship and accountability with me every single week. Some take me up on it, some don't, but the point is that the door is always open so that at any point in time in their business, I am here for them. And I would say that like maybe 75% of the time, it's specific to the course, specific to the program and where they are so that we go over things. And then another 25% of the time, it's it's life talking about death and marriage and personal things. And I'm helping somebody now who's really interested in getting her business venture backed. So I'm helping her out with that. And it's really about showing people through example, leading by example and showing people exactly how to do things in their business, because you can have any training course is going to have its limitations because everybody's position, everybody's situation is unique. So what I do and the way that I've been helping the people who come to me, look, at the end of the day, I have I have a couple of rules for myself. And that is, if you come to me for help, I'm going to make you successful, right? I am, as long as you do whatever it is that I tell you to do, I am going to do everything in my power to get you successful and get you to where you want to be. It is my life's goal. And The other thing is just I tell people not to quit, right? You can't quit. As long as you stick with it and you do the work, 
if you get on this call with me, if you're a client of mine and you get on the call and they say, well, I'm not sure how to do something, I'll spend two hours and I'll just do it for them. I'll show them the steps. I'll be like, okay, what's your market? Okay, this, ba 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 And I let them fill in the blanks because they know their market better than I sure do, right? But I walk them through it and I'll do it over and over and over. And I'm going to make sure that they get this taken care of. And the other thing that I promise to people that come to me as clients and as students of the program mm -hmm. is that it is my firm belief, not only should you get to where you want to be, but that the program, no matter the cost, because it is a premium product, it is a high ticket product, no matter the cost, it ultimately should be free of charge. You should not have to pay for this program. So you're basically putting money down you have to pay for it, right? Obviously, there is a cost associated. There's a tuition associated with the program. Mm -hmm. But once you're in the program, it walks you step by step by step, not only to get that money back, but to double, triple, or quadruple it. Okay, so That's the point. You give me $1, I give you two back. That's the deal. Right. So it's not that they shouldn't have to pay for it. It's that they should be able to be so well off or learn so much in the program that the program should pay for itself is what you mean. The program pays for itself and it pays for – any additional software, any additional scaling, anything that you need to do. Because the number one problem for my customers and my clients mm -hmm. is that they most oftentimes come with an idea and a bag of money, right? And there's so many people out there that are the normal way of business. Any agency, any production company is like, oh, bag of money. Dope. Let's do this. But it's not the production. The production company, the agency, the software developers, they don't take personal responsibility. Even if they take equity, they don't often – Take personal responsibility for the success of whatever it is that you do. It's all on you, right? And they're going to help, but you're going to pay them. And if it doesn't work out, oh, well, bag of money. For me, it's not about that. It's about making sure that if you're going to spend a dollar on something, you know what you're spending that money on and you know what you get out of it and you have a step-by-step -step guide to get you to wherever it is that you're going to go. Most people have this messed up idea that I have an idea – I have this really cool dream of something and I've raised 10, 20, 30, a hundred thousand dollars or more. And I'm just going to pay someone to build it. And then it's magically going to be a success because I want it. So certainly everybody else out there wants it. And that's not the case. And I would much rather someone not spend a nickel on something or spend something on educating themselves on how to launch a product a high ticket product from day one ground zero mm -hmm. so that they could use this skill for the rest of their lives. And 30 years from now, they can use the exact same techniques to launch business number 25, right? Or business number two or whatever, right? That's pretty much how I feel about the relationship with the people that work with me. I take absolute personal responsibility. That's just how it is. That's how I feel. Okay. I think that create your life family. What Todd is saying is, Give a great promise. I'm not going to say under promise, but give a great promise and still over deliver on that promise. And that's what's going to make a difference for your client. And I want to say also, that's something that we've been doing, especially with those who have come to us wanting us to help them launch their podcast. I mean, Todd, you've seen the amount of research that I did for the gentleman who wanted to have his podcast launched. I went and listened to all of the shows that he said that he liked. I literally came up with an intro and outro and also a really in-depth outline for the show, as well as all of these other things that came up with his MP3 tags, all of these things, summaries. And I think that that over delivery and being available for people to tap into you is really what makes a difference because at the end of the day, you can go and take a course anywhere. And we all mm -hmm. have competitors in our industries. That's how we know we should be in the industries because the industry exists, right? And you really want to be in a blue ocean. That's a different conversation. However, it's the relationships and the way that you treat people that are going to make a huge difference. And Todd, we've had conversations and I actually did a testimonial for you. And the biggest thing that I said in the testimonial was what I honestly feel is, is that when you're dealing with Todd and you're working with him, you're dealing with family and he actually cares about you and not the money or your business. Right. It's, it's mm -hmm. about you. And it's really about moving you from point A to point D or point F which is fortune. Let's just call it F for fortune or something like that. It's <laughs> just being silly. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, and, and I think we're touching on the same base. And that is that my personal definition of entrepreneurship is that an entrepreneur is somebody who takes personal responsibility for somebody else's problem. Mm -hmm. So you have to take personal responsibility for somebody else's problem. And if you do that, if you take personal responsibility for somebody else's problem, then the money is going to flow naturally 
because your value to somebody for taking as much responsibility for their for their problem as they are, mm -hmm. that is something that most people do not do. And that is something that is going to make you stand out to make sense. No, absolutely. And standing out and keeping your clients for the longevity is really what matters. It's relationships. And that's how businesses, man, think about these Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100, Fortune 10 these companies, they exist because they have a long-standing relationships. And I think a lot of that starts with your word. And it really is about the relationship and the customer service that you give out. Yeah. So real quick, how are you validating Podcast Laundry? To be honest with you, I learned from this wise guy that I always have uh, conversations with. He says that payment is the greatest validation. And when we're talking about validating, it's not from a vanity perspective. It's just that, you know, if you're doing something and people are paying you for it, then that is the validation because someone saying that they would like to do something or yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do it is different than them putting hard cash up and saying, yes, I would like to receive this service immediately or now. And so we are validating by actually getting customers and clients and serving them and serving them in a way that they will say, hey, you know what? I would like to continue to work with Kevin. And I would also like to bring on my friend, like how you said, your course is spread through word of mouth. And that's what matters is being able to mm -hmm. uptick, but you know, create your life family. Keep in mind that there is an advantage to getting that first customer in at a discounted rate and just keep going up from there. Customer is a customer. And the way I look at it is getting that first customer, they get the discounted rate with the caveat that they're going to give me a testimonial. Mm -hmm. And people love it. People love that. Say, okay, well, I'm going to give you this huge discount, but there's one condition. Oh, mm -hmm. what's that? The one condition is that after I get you the result, you give me a testimonial. Mm -hmm. Their face lights up because you've, you've basically told them that they're going to get exactly what they want. Of course, they're going to give you a testimonial. And then you can raise your price to whatever. Yeah, we, we do the same thing. We validate through money, through payment. So our rule of thumb is that if I get one sale, it's proof of concept, right? One sale equals proof of concept. I have proven that somebody wants this concept. Once I have anywhere between five and 10 sales, that proof of concept has enough information from paying clients to make that program stronger, right? Because you're going to get feedback. People are going to say, oh, well, I really wish you had done this instead of that. Or, oh, I don't really understand this. Could you explain it more? Mm -hmm. All these different things. That's just going to make your whatever your program or service is stronger. After you've hit somewhere between five or 10 of your first clients, then you're ready to scale the business through advertising and things like that. So for us, we're at that sweet spot of about six I'm probably going to do just a few more only because my wife is pregnant right now. So I can't blow the doors off of sales. I got to, I have a, a due date coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to kind of watch that. But um, aside from that, we're ready to scale the business. And um, because I've closed sales and I've talked to enough people, I know my close rate. And I'm sure the close rate will change as I move out from warm traffic to cold traffic. Right now, I'm closing about 40%, which is ridiculous. And I know that's not a real number, right? That's kind of a vanity metric because it's warm traffic. It's through people who know me or people who know me directly. So the number is obviously going to be higher. That's a good sign, though. If I'm closing at 40% now, that usually means that I can bet that when I get out to cold traffic, I should be closing 20 to 30, somewhere around there. So I'm good with that. That gives me math. That gives me numbers that I can work with so I, I can start to project revenue for 2019. Yeah. And I want to also point out, I don't think that this vanity metrics only reason being is because you're actually doing the closing. But I think that it is important for us to understand where we're sourcing or what pool we're tapping into. So I guess I would mm -hmm. say it is vanity metrics, but it's not. You're actually closing. But at the same time, when you start to get into those cold waters, you know, you'll really see. You know, I feel like it's two different things at that point, right? You have your warm leads and then you have your cold leads. And so your warm lead close rate is 40 percent and then your cold lead close rate will be something else different. So, Right. And you might be right. I mean, I honestly don't know because I've never measured it specifically. I mean, do you think in your experience, is it easier to close people in your own circle or is it easier to close people that don't know you? To be honest with you, I haven't closed anyone in my close circle. A lot of the podcasters that I know couldn't afford our price point per se. Some of the podcasters, they edit and do a good job themselves. So they don't want to offset. I have something in the works for that coming up fairly soon. But what I am interested in or what has happened is that people who I've met and just had a conversation with. So actually, you know, what's funny is I'm more so getting business from the cold side or cold leads. And mm -hmm. I'm having these conversations with these people and it's going great. But 
these are discovery conversations where I'm asking open-ended questions about how their experience is going. Do they have somebody else editing? It's literally like, who does your editing? Oh, you know, your show sounds amazing. I listen to the show. Who does your editing? They tell me, how's your experience been so far? I had one young lady tell me that, hey, you know what? I'm paying premium pricing and I'm not getting my files back on time. They're missing this. They're missing that. Just also trying to understand the process that other people have them going through in order to upload their files, offset their files, who's doing the uploading of it to the server, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what's actually helping me to build out the components and the offerings of our company is by doing those discovery conversations. Is that the biggest lesson you've learned so far? The mechanics of your business. You always have something on paper. You say, okay, this is how the business will work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what is it? Oh, I'm going to butcher the quote and I don't, I can't even quote the boxer, but there's a, a famous boxing phrase that says your plans go out the window once you get punched in the face. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. It's Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Perfect. Yeah. yeah um, that kind of thing. Like you have it on paper and then people are like, yo, I'm not getting, my, I'm, I'm not getting, I'm paying the price, but I'm not getting the files the way I need them. Yeah. Well, you know, fortunately that wasn't from our company that they were complaining about. However, it offers us a level up on that company. Mm. And, you know, these are big companies, but what it is, is that their customer service isn't that great. And so it's because they're also doing many other things. These are like media companies trying to have a podcast branch. And we're like, hey, this is what we do for a living. Come on in. We only want X amount of customers. Why don't you be one of ours and we'll treat you like royalty? And that's really what has helped us to to go great and have these relationships and be able to build out and essentially take other people's customers. Right. You're offering a concierge service and you're kind of rolling out the red carpet and, and people like the stars that they either are or want to be. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Customer service. That's what's going to differentiate us in the market and make a huge difference for any business, as we've been talking about here today. Because, again, yeah. you know, anybody can undercut you for pricing, but it's the experience yeah. and the relationship that's really going to make the difference. Absolutely. We're in the same on the same side on that one. I mean, one of the things I've told people whenever people are on the fence I just tell them the truth. Tony Robbins is not going to be picking up the phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. you're not going to get him on. You're not going to get Tony Robbins on the phone. He's not going to talk to you directly and help you out. And, uh, you know, he's not here, but I am. No, you know, absolutely. I'm the one calling. I'm the one trying to help. I'm the one showing you what to do. And I'm the one helping you get results. So it's about who's actually going to be there for you when you need them to be there for you. That is and what, I don't think that's something that can be understated. No, absolutely. So what went wrong with Atomic Startup? Probably the biggest thing that went wrong is that I underestimated the time it was going to take to get the program, the training program completed. I initially estimated four months mm -hmm. and it's been eight <laughs> okay. So a double. Unfortunately, um, you know, this, my my clients are getting results, so I think they're they don't seem to care. You know, as long as they keep moving forward, they've been giving me the thumbs up, so I'm good with that. But yeah, just not completely missing the time. Okay. And what went right? The thing that went right was I at least so far it's product market fit. I didn't expect to get people on board as fast as I did. I was completely comfortable getting one person, as I said, and what ended up happening is I got six without much work. So that gave me a, the spark is there. The sign is there. Uh, and I think it's more about refining the product now than it is trying to prove that there's desire for it because the it's been validated. OK, sweet. OK, so for me, what went wrong, I would have to say us initially not understanding how big the market was and who our competitors were. They were more so individuals versus companies. So I think that, that was probably yeah. the biggest right, challenge. So Got it. So what went right? What was the one thing that you just nailed? I think being adaptable and listening. I mean, Going I know that, that the entire system that I built around Create Your Life is what we're adapting and putting into play for other podcasters. And But being open and willing to adapt and change our business model is what helped us to be able to get clients in and be able to serve them. Because had we just competed on editing and a price challenge to the bottom then we wouldn't be able to be a sustainable brand at this point. So I think that those are the areas where we got That's it right. That's really important, man. Absolutely. That's important. All right. Well, Todd, you man, know? thanks so much, man, for helping out and being on the show here today, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Absolutely, man. I love it. Okay. Well, Create Your Life family, as you know, Todd is a resident, and you will be hearing 
much, much more from us with the Create Your Life series and CEO Talks as we move forward. But I want to remind you and say thank you so much for listening. And if this content is delivering value to you, please go to iTunes and Stitcher and rate and review us. This helps us build this community and building the community is what we're all about right now so that we can deliver as much value as possible to you. So until next time, create your life and feed your ambition. This episode was brought to you by PodcastLaundry.com. I love Podcast Laundry. It provides a real solution to free up my time. And time is the only resource that we cannot get back. Podcast Laundry was created with love to help other fellow busy podcasters free up time so that they could do more of what they love, whether that's traveling, time with friends and family, or working on other ventures. If you want to free up your time, then have Podcast Laundry do the dirty work of note-taking, graphic creation, editing, show tagging, and uploading for you. Go to PodcastLaundry.com or call 347-871-8273 to schedule your consultation. And remember to use code CYLS. That's PodcastLaundry.com or call 347-871-8273.